Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Oh, everybody's having a great week. I am blowing through some customer's equipment today, but I thought I'd stop because I had one come up on the bench that has an extremely common issue that's a super easy fix that I thought I'd film for y'all and hopefully I can save y'all some time, money, and frustration in the future. Today, we're talking carburetor adjustments. Now, although I'm doing this demonstration with a Husqvarna 120LD, it doesn't matter if you have a Steel, an Echo, a Shindawa, or any other kind of brand, the principles are gonna be pretty much the same. And I'm gonna actually go over them and show you the differences in them. That way you'll be familiar with it. So the customer brought this trimmer in saying it only runs on choke. And I see that a lot with these Husqvarna's. First off, I've made a video a long time ago. I will leave a link right up above if you are having this issue. The first thing you need to check is your fuel filter because these are notorious for the fuel lines rotting after a couple of years, the fuel line falling off, a bunch of debris getting sucked up into the carburetor, clogging the screen, and that leads to the diaphragm sucking into themselves and then it's never going to run right. It's just sort of like a cascading effect of issues. But on this trimmer, it doesn't have that issue. The fuel filter is still attached to the fuel line. The cylinder looks great. The gas seems okay. So what could be wrong with it? It might still be starving for fuel. Over time, it does start to deteriorate those fuel lines. And if you don't wanna dig into that big repair yet, it's not gonna hurt to just give your carburetor a little bit more fuel. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Now, I've been really hesitant to make any kind of carburetor adjusting videos because 90% of the time, if you have to adjust your carburetor, there is an issue that made it have to be adjusted. Like on this one, it probably is the fuel line starting to deteriorate, sucking up into the carburetor. So yes, you are gonna have issues, but a lot of times you just wanna give it some more gas and it'll probably last you a whole season if you just have the carburetor adjustment tool to do that. Now, if you have a really old unit, most everything just took a small flathead, but these days the government has put so much regulation on them that everything has its own special tool. So you're gonna have to buy something. Now on this particular unit, the Husqvarna's or the Poulan's, some of the Craftsman's, they take a splined adjustment tool. And it looks just like this. I will pop up a picture of what the end looks like. And that's the tool we're gonna to use for this particular unit. But something I've been showing to all my viewers for many years now is this toolkit you can get on Amazon because a lot of people, they might have a Husqvarna trimmer, but they might have a steel chainsaw or they might have a echo blower. A lot of times you're going to have a bunch of different kinds of units at your house. So you're gonna need a bunch of different tools to adjust it because they're all different. So this kit, comes with all of these adjusting tools. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. This covers pretty much everything from steel, Husqvarna, Poulan, Craftsman, Homelite, Ryobi, pretty much them all. Except I found out in the last few years that instead of the orange one that I've been pushing for like 10.99, they came out with another one that's got one more piece in it and it's called an A circle. I drew a picture because the end of it looks like that with a prong sticking in the center. And so it's perfectly circled. So none of these other ones you can get on there. It's a completely different size. So if you have, I think it's on some of the Craftsman trimmers. If you have one of those and you look and it's a perfectly round center with a hole in it offset, it's a special tool. So you're gonna have to get the black toolkit instead of the orange one. I had to buy it separate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off because I wanna explain what your adjustments do. Now I am just removing this so I can get you in and get you a better look, but you usually can find holes that you don't have to remove your cover or the entire air filter base is set away and you can see the carburetor good. But on this particular unit, it is hidden under there. So I'm gonna pop this off and let's take a look. Most all of these two strokes will have three adjustments. You will have your high adjustment, your low adjustment, and your throttle adjustment. Now the low gives more fuel while it's idling. The high gives it more fuel while you're giving it full throttle. And the throttle adjustment gives it a bit, little bit more of your throttle trigger while it's running constantly. Now let's go over the throttle adjustment first. As you can see, it's got a screw that goes down and hits this little bracket right here, and that is your throttle lever. So every time you press your throttle trigger, it pulls back that throttle lever, which pulls the flap back and gives it more air. So if we turn the throttle adjust in, it constantly leaves this open just a little bit, which lets more air through your carburetor. 
So where does this adjustment come in handy? Well, if you've had your unit maybe a couple years or longer and you go to run it and it runs fine, it'll start up, it'll idle for a little bit, you run it really at full throttle, works great, you go to set it down while it's still idling and all of a sudden you hear it get worse and worse until it just bogs out and dies on you. Well, that's because over time your diaphragms might be worn out in your carburetor and it's letting too much fuel through. So on idle, it'll struggle to keep going because it's not getting enough air. Now make sure your air filter is clean before you do this because that will also make your machine flood out on you. But if you know you've got good gas, you know your air filter is clean, go ahead and turn that throttle adjust in just a little bit. Make sure that it's not making your head spin or if you're doing it on a chainsaw that your chain's not continuously spinning. But if you can turn it in just a little bit to keep that idle going, you're good to go. Now moving on to the low and high adjustment. The high is always farthest away from your cylinder. So you always know that the low is the closest one to your cylinder and high is farthest away. So the low is for your idle and the high is for full throttle. Now this customer said that it will only run on choke. That means they will start it up and immediately when they take it off choke and quit feeding it that extra fuel, it'll die on them. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and we're gonna start it up and see what it does. And then if it does only run on choke, I'm going to come out probably a quarter turn on the low and see if that helps any. All right, so we are turned on. I'm gonna prime it a bunch. I have not started this trimmer yet, so I have no idea what it's gonna do. I got it on choke. I am going to put it in the floor to start it easier for me. Well, that's it. I took it off choke and it only lasted for a few seconds. You heard that. Let's see if we can start it again up here now that I've got that initial go on choke. Every time I take it off choke, it dies. Let's try it one more time. Gave it some gas, it dies. So obviously this thing is starving for fuel. Now we noticed that it didn't want to idle for very long. And then when I gave it gas, it didn't want to run at all. It completely just died. So I know I'm going to go on both my low and my high. Now, sometimes you only have to adjust one. And if you adjust the other one, it might bog out on you. So I'm going to go and do just a quarter turn. I'm telling you guys, a small adjustment goes a long way on here. Do my low, one quarter turn. High, one quarter turn. Go on choke, let's see what she does. Well, she died, but she she died while it was still choking. So that means it might be better. Hold on. Now I took it completely off choke like you would normally start a trimmer. Come on. Now let's try it on choke. that's all it needs. It needs that little quarter turn. I went ahead and went another eighth out because it sounded still a little boggy on the high to me, but that's all it needs. Now, usually this is not a permanent fix. It'll probably last you the season, but when you come back to it next year, it's going to do it again. And you're going to keep adjusting more and more until finally your diaphragms are so worn out that you got to fix it. That's why I made the other video showing you how to go through the carburetor or replace, change your fuel lines, fuel filter, plug, and completely service. So why am I telling you this when there's a chance if you don't know what you're doing, you can completely burn your unit up if you don't adjust the carburetor correctly? Well, that's because if all you're doing is backing out on those high and low adjustments, you can't burn it up. All you're doing is giving it more fuel. Now, when it comes to knowing if you have it running at the correct RPMs at full throttle, 
I go by ear, so I don't wear any kind of hearing protection. And I know y'all get on to me about it, but it's my job. It's, it's just what I've got to do. Now you might want to get a digital tachometer. Depending on which unit you're working on, they all have top RPM. So you'll probably have to Google that. But once you find that number, you're able to stick this thing right next to the engine and it give you a reading and know if you're at the correct RPMs. when it comes to your steel trimmers, they decided to put a hexagon shape on the tips of their adjusting screws. And the kit that I was telling you about comes with one called a hexagon. And this one, it feels a little loose, but it does work for these steels. And the principles are gonna be exactly the same. If you feel like it will only run on choke and dies, you're gonna to wanna to give it a little bit more fuel on the low end. If it won't take off when you give it that full throttle, give it some more on the high. If it idles for a little bit and it runs fine on high, but it ends up dying while it's idling, you can go in on the low adjust just a little bit. But a lot of your steel carburetors, you can still use a flathead. Now let's move on to Echo and Shindawa, and they got the hidden adjustments. Now I got a Shindawa up on the bench. These are both my units and my handheld blower. Yes, it is dirty. I need to clean it. But I wanted to show you the adjustments on these because by just looking at it, you can see a throttle adjustment here. See, moves that right there. If you turn that one in, that's your throttle adjust. Same thing on the Shindawa here. You've got this right here, if you turn this little screw in right here, that's your throttle adjust, but where's the high and low? They are nowhere to be found, are they? Let me show you. Now, when adjusting these, you're gonna have to have more tools because they have limiter caps in them. Now, if we get over here to the Shindawa, there is a hole down in there, and I've already removed the limiter cap but I don't think I can show you good enough to, sh let me see. There is a D-shaped prong on the end of that adjustment screw. And if we go around to the top here, where the other secret one is, right here in the center, there is another D-shaped prong that comes up at, for the end of that adjustment screw. Now the carburetor on the handheld blower is almost exactly the same as the Echo trimmers. And if you look at it from this side here, there's a small little black plug here. That is your limiter cap that has to be removed before you can adjust it. And it's the same here. The adjustment is down inside this hole and there is a limiter cap in there that you have to remove before you can get to the adjustment. Now to remove these limiter caps on these particular units, you have to have a special tool made by Echo. The part number is a 91075. It's a 2.5 millimeter. There's some larger uh, black plugs that you have to remove with a part number 91076, and this is a three millimeter, but this smaller one is going to remove mo the majority of the limiter caps. Now, once you have this tool and you're able to remove these limiter caps, the threads on the end of it are actually backwards threads. So when we want to go in here, let's find our hole. I'm gonna firmly press it while I'm giving it a few turns here. Probably just a turn and a half, and then I'm gonna pull straight out, just like that. See, that's our little limiter cap there so we can get to our adjustment. Once you got your little plug limiter cap out, I don't know if I can get you in there good enough, but it's just a little slot in there for a flathead. It'll be same for the high adjustment up here. Now, removing these limiter caps, if you do not have this special tool, is not fun. <laughs> you can do it by picking at it forever, but I don't know. If you have some easier way to do it, guys, let me know in the comment box below and I'll let all my viewers know because I have not had this tool handy before and had to pick it out and it took forever. But if you remove your limiter caps and you find out that you have the D end of the prong for the adjusting screw instead of just a flathead, this toolkit that I told you about has the D tool in it. 
so you don't have to go looking for an expensive Echo one. Now when adjusting a handheld echo blower or trimmer, once you get those plugs removed, it is just a flathead, but it's a super tiny little flathead, okay? Like super tiny, like maybe you can get one out of your eyeglass kit or something like that, or I'll leave a link to one in the description box below. All right, so you know you need an adjustment, you bought the tool, you got your limiter caps out, but which one's the high and which one's the low? So no matter if it is a Shindawa a trimmer or a blower or an echo trimmer or blower, all of them are exactly the same. The adjustment that goes through the top of your throttle vane here, this is always your low. So anytime you need to adjust your idle, this is the one you're going to adjust. If you want to adjust for your high RPMs for your full throttle, it's the one going through the side. So guys, I'm gonna leave links to all these adjusting tools in the description box below. Also the digital tachometer, that way you can adjust any equipment that you have at home. Or if you don't have that equipment and you have all these adjusting tools, you can be that cool neighbor that can help out. So I do want to reiterate though, there is always an issue. If you have to adjust your carburetor, there is something that made it have to be adjusted. So you always want to go through the basics, check first, make sure your fuel is fresh. Are you using canned fuel? Is your air filter clean? Is your spark plug good? Is your exhaust clogged? It could be a lot of issues before you need to go digging in on your carburetor. I'll leave a link to a video that I made about why not to adjust your carburetor at the end of this video. So guys, thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. Hopefully this video Video will save you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you find yourself coming back over and over again, think about hitting that subscribe button. It helps out the algorithm to make my videos shown to more people to save them time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at the real chicanic or find me at chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve, long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.